We once again invite the Holy Spirit to, to guide us in our conversation and study of, of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and the Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But God, we thank you for the opportunity to study and learn and appreciate more the role of the Blessed Mother in the life of Mother Seton. Thank you for the great work St. Elizabeth Ann Seton did in her life, for the blessings which carry down to us through the generations. Help us to remain as she and the Blessed Mother Mary did, ever close to you and open to your Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we enter into session four, on the life of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and, and the role of the Blessed Mother Mary in conjunction with the, the Most Holy Rosary, the glorious mysteries we'll conclude with today, we recognize that there really is certainly a moving towards a, an otherworldliness, a, a glory which we are truly created for, way, way beyond anything we might accomplish or achieve in a, in a lifetime of work on earth. Mother Seton was able to sense that, be aware of that, know she was moving towards something that was bigger than her. And so we'll pick up where, where we left off after session three. Remember, she had just pulled out of uh, New York Harbor, uh, June 8th of uh, 1808. And, and so her, her journey is, is, is kind of leaving New York, a, a hope in the air and an awareness of something bigger is happening, right? All of the fatigue and weariness of mind and body pass. The firmament of heaven so bright, the cheering sea breeze and merry sailors would drive old care away indeed. The firmament of heaven so bright. Yes, it's shown to her through the sailors and the other people on the ship who are so good to her and the kids, but it's the firmament of heaven that, that she's sailing towards, leaving behind the, the pain and the suffering that she experienced in New York, those sorrowful mysteries. And, and so she's moving forward, excited, When she reaches the, the harbor of Baltimore, where will she'll land after a seven-day journey. Tomorrow, do I go among strangers? No. Has an anxious thought or fear passed my mind? No. Can I be disappointed? No. One sweet sacrifice will reunite my soul with all who offer it, Doubt and fear fly from the breast inhabited by him. There can be no disappointment where the soul's only desire and expectation is to meet his adored will and fulfill it. Wow. Imagine that. Strangers, fear, disappointment, fleeing, fleeing from the, the breast which once ached so much as she fell into the breast of Mary, fell into the foot of Jesus at the cross. She now realizes all that's left in that heart, the only thing left is his adored will. So she lands in, in Baltimore, it takes them an overnight to get their bags cleared through customs, and she starts up the road, up Paca Street, to the chapel that awaits her, Father Duborg Seminary, St. Mary's Seminary. And it just so happens she's arriving on the day of the dedication of their new chapel. It is quite an experience for a convert who is battled in, in a very Protestant New York situation to be welcomed into a very Catholic Baltimore city and onto these grounds where the Archbishop is in the middle of this beautiful Mass consecrating this, this new chapel. Human nature could scarcely bear it. Your imagination can never conceive the splendor, the glory of the scene. All I have told you of Florence is a shadow. Hmm. She loved Florence. But for it to be a shadow of what she was experiencing and, and praying with. And just imagine as the Mass ends and the, the people are able to inter interact and exchange and greet her and see her kids. What? Excitement? At meeting this family, this Catholic family? So new. So new for them after those kids have only known rejection when it was revealed that they were Catholic. Now, they're being welcomed, excited for people to greet them. It's so nice to, to be wanted in, in that way. 
Now, she's no fool. She knows the sorrowful chapters of her life, the, uh, the coming to light, the struggle that she went through before she became Catholic. That we talked about in session two were important moments because that peels away the human attachment that, that comes from, from being in this world. The, the, that, that we respect our good name. We, we want the respect of, of others and, and we want to... No, not in her heart. Not in her soul. That's been been peeled away for, for her, any of those those attachments. All those little dear attentions of human life, which I was entirely weaned from, are now my daily portion from the family of Mr. Dubourg, whose sister and mother are unwearied in their care for us. The little niceties which I cannot afford are daily sent to us as a part of their family. This is Father Dubourg's family. Remember, she uses the title Mr. throughout her journal. Father Dubourg's sister and mother are pouring out care upon them, things she had learned to live without. She's accepting of them, beautiful of them, but knows that they're just extra. They're just bonus, not, not required to know that she's in the right place. She knows she's in the right place, deeper inside than those external things. The fact that she's finally in a place where things have settled down externally reveals an internal peace that she knows as well. Daily and hourly receiving the most precious consolations, not with the enthusiastic delight I once experienced, but gently, gratefully, offering to resign them in the very moment of enjoyment. That's it. That's what Baltimore's bringing to her now. Something that she knows is beautiful and a gift, a free gift from God. But she'll resign it in a moment if it gets in the way of what? His adored will. That's what's in her heart. Not the attachment to the consolation, but an attachment to his will. What a beautiful gift. So, what happens in these peaceful waters? Remember? Remember the enemy was the one who tried to stir up the waters. He couldn't snag the fish out of peaceful waters. So, now that there's peaceful waters, the building and the growing is happening. Her, her little house built for her begins to, to become the school that she had dreamed of and, and hoped for. Of course, her own kids, the four boarders promised to her, um, are quickly added to. But the house is small. They're not going to be able to get too big there at that first location on, on Paca Street. So the, the, the boarding school is there. The, she describes the routine, morning prayer, studies, stop for lunch, afternoon studies, evening prayer. We'll do it again tomorrow. Mixed in there is her own study. You know, as a teacher, she's learning from, from the uh, college next door, St. Mary's Seminary and University. Those professors, those St. Mary's College professors are there, you know, giving her some extra lessons so she can continue to teach. The specialties, the artists, some of the science, they're there to kind of teach the kids who, who, who need extra and want extra. What a beautiful arrangement she's kind of found herself in for her school to grow. But what else is happening? Remember, that Cana experience, that heart purified for Jesus alone. She had her opportunities for sure at remarriage to, to fall in love again, but there's some awareness that she was not called to that. And so is it possibly a, a religious vocation growing in, in this moment? Is there a, a chance that she might be called upon to, to gather others to herself? Like Minded women who also want to see education grow and, and works of charity increase. Something else is, is growing at this time. As she visits with, with others, with, uh, with the Archbishop, with Father Duborg, um, she writes back to, to Julia about what she sees as stirring already in these first few months of her time there. This is just October. Remember she got there in June. It is expected. I shall be the mother of many daughters. A letter received from Philadelphia, where my blessed father, our patriarch, now is on a visit, tells me he has found two of the sweetest young women who were going to Spain to seek a refuge from the world, though they are both Americans, Cecilia and May. And now wait until my house is opened for them next spring, we hope. She's writing about Archbishop Carroll's trip to Philly and these young women he's met and promised and experienced here in the States that they will be able to be a part of something great next spring, they hope. That's a big promise. It's a big promise, a fast timeline. 
a letter arrives from New York that kind of says in some way a, a sense of how is this really coming together with the, the responsibilities of your own children? How is it that, that, you know, that priority, now the borders you've taken on that you can possibly be imagining taking in these, these young adult women to form a community? It can only be that you have a perfect reliance on the care of him who is ruler of all things, Submission to his will and faith in his protection. That is the foundation of your peace. Right? Right? Mary Post is, is writing beautiful po prophetic words. That sense of peace with all of this growing and moving. This kingdom being built. Submission to his will and faith in his protection. Absolutely. That's what gives her the freedom to accept what is happening around her. Now this is coming together in a very powerful way uh, by a friendship that is struck up that that uh, one might be you know suspicious of, uh, but just as you could find suspicion perhaps in the friendship she struck up with Antonio, how is she so close to this to this married man? And she writes from her heart so glowingly and, and cares about his heart. It was a pure love, it really was, and and she at times kind of uh, reveals that that she has a mature celibacy about her. She knows her is at times natural attractions and inclinations, but she also knows when they're coming from God and should be acted upon or, or rejected and set aside. And it seems to me this uh, interaction she has uh, early in her time at seminary uh, is, is, is quite, uh, quite important for her to, to make sense of this. Samuel Sutherland Cooper. He was intent on the priesthood. And in fact, he was just finished his first year of seminary when, when, the, when Elizabeth and the kids arrive. He, he was 39, a few years older than, than Elizabeth, but convinced, you know, even as this second vocation, a little later in life vocation to priesthood, that's where God wanted him to be. And, and so she's aware that there, that there could be a question around their, their friendship. Elizabeth writes this again to, to Cecilia back in New York. If we had not devoted ourselves to the heavenly spouse before we met, I do not know how the attraction would have terminated, but as it is, I fear him not, nor any other. But such a perfect character is a fit offering to the fountain of all perfection. He has my rosary and little red cross by way of memento of the Georgetown expedition. So here's someone who, who she cared enough about to, to entrust her, her special rosary to, you know, to, to have a friendship that deep. And and this next bit of history uh, is quite long, but it is a perfect summary of what's about to happen and what unfolds when, when Cooper finds out that there is uh, just a small obstacle to Elizabeth Ann Seton really becoming Mother Seton and taking to herself this, this religious community, these young sisters, and growing their, their education plans. That one obstacle was, was finance. So who's the kind of the, the linchpin in all of this is Father Dubois, right? He, he'd be running the seminary. He's the one who invited Elizabeth Ann Seton down. She would confide in, in him what she was receiving in prayer and, and hoped to, to fulfill. He, of course, knew what was going on in the lives of the seminarians. And he's asked years later, much, much later, to kind of recount uh, what had happened. And, and so... This is from 1828, so you got to jump, you know, 20 years ahead, and I, to 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 see him looking back at these uh, these early days in Baltimore. Some years ago, God called an extraordinary manner, in an extraordinary manner, another soul chosen to accomplish His designs, Mother Seton of New York. This lady felt a strong desire for the religious life, which she regarded as the manifest work of God. But she was not encouraged by her director, who represented to her as a serious impediment the tender age of her five children. Who's to blame that spiritual director? She has five kids, and she feels called to religious life. It didn't seem like there was any way that would fit early on in New York. She came, however, to reside in Baltimore, and was there brought in contact with a priest who was much occupied with religious establishment. Mr. Cooper had been... Had, had then been a year in the seminary, both addressed themselves to this priest. He, he's writing him of himself at this point. Father Dubourg, 
He, talk, he talks first about, about Elizabeth Ann. In her frequent conferences with her director, Mrs. Seton learned that he had thought for a long time of establishing the Daughters of Charity in America, and as the duties of this institute would be compatible with the cares of her family, this virtuous lady expressed a most ardent desire of seeing it commenced and of being herself admitted into it. He sees it as a way of continuing the work of, of St. Vincent from, from Paris, France. She sees it as, as the language and structure and framework for what her heart was aching for. An insurmountable obstacle stood in the way of this project. This was the absolute want to pecuniary resources, to lay the foundation of this new society. They resolved to pray jointly to God to remove this obstacle. One morning in the year 1808, Mrs. Seton called upon her director and told him, at the risk of being considered a visionary, she felt obliged to disclose to him what our Lord, in a clear and intelligible voice, said to her after communion. Go, said he to her, address yourself to Mr. Cooper. He will give you what is necessary to commence the establishment. So she's bouncing this idea off the priest before she acts on it. I heard this at Mass. I, I know this voice, and, I, and I've known it's the Lord, and I've trusted it. It's led me through great discernment. It's led me from New York to here. What do you think, Father? What you tell me is possible, replied the priest, but I have strong reasons for prohibiting you from following what you may be you may only be the sport of your imagination. If it is God who has spoken to you, he will make his will known also to Mr. Cooper, and you may rest assured that he will be docile to the voice. She withdrew, satisfied. Okay? I'll let this be. Rather than go and ask it of Mr. Cooper, I'll see if the Lord doesn't stir the same thing in Samuel Cooper's heart. On the evening of that same day, this director received a visit from Mr. Cooper, who began by expressing his astonishment that nothing had yet been done in favor of the female sex, which, he said, has so powerful an influence in regard to morals and religion. On the reply of the director that for 15 years he had been revolving such a project in his mind and that certain pious persons in Baltimore were offering daily prayers for the same good work what then prevents you, asked Mr. Cooper. The want of means, answered the priest, for an establishment of this kind cannot be undertaken without fund. Oh, well, said Mr. Cooper, I have $10,000 which I can give you for this purpose. Struck at the coincidence of these two communications, the priest inquired if he had seen Mrs. Seton that day or if he had ever spoken to her upon this subject. Never he said. But do you think of entrusting Mrs. Seaton with this affair? The director answered, you may be sure, sir, that I could do no better, for she is here, she is here for that purpose, and I will relate to you what she told me this morning. God be blessed, exclaimed Mr. Cooper, and he added, what you tell me is nothing new. Nevertheless, the priest did not consider it well to accept the offer for two entire months that the donor might have ample time for reflection. And when at the end of this period, he prevented himself with the money, he said, Sir, this establishment will be made at Emmitsburg, a village 18 leagues from Baltimore, and thence it will extend throughout the United States. Now, there's certainly a lot that happens in this recounting by, by Father Dubourg, but isn't it amazing the amount of trust? He says, if this is from the Lord first, let's not act on it. We'll see if Samuel Cooper brings it up. He does. If this is from the Lord, let's not grab the money and impulse. Let's wait. Two months later, here it is. And you know what? We're going to start this thing in Emmitsburg. And it's going to spread through the whole United States. He was right. What an amazing thing it is when you know the Holy Spirit has been moving and working and bringing threads so far unrelated. A family in Italy, a family in New York, a bishop in Baltimore, a, a layman in, in Philadelphia looking for a second career as a priest. Suddenly, all woven together there at St. Mary's College. 
in the sense that even with that coincidence, it's not going to happen there. But it's going to happen in Emmitsburg. Completely up in the mountains, in the wild. What an entrust, what an entrust, what an act of trust to place us all into, into the, the Lord's hands to say that something special is going to grow in and touch our entire country. And indeed it did. Indeed it did. It's pretty exciting to, to see that um, God's coincidences don't, don't quit. All right, don't quit. So when this takes off, and it does move fast, um, by the next spring, it's time to really uh, give her the, the title and responsibility of, of leading this community. And it comes time for her to kind of write her intentions, which, which she does to Archbishop Carroll, and then decides, all right, let's do this, seeing the formal rules laid out. What day? On March 25th, 1809, the Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lord. Elizabeth Seton pronounced her vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, binding for one year in the presence of the Archbishop. Those temporary vows, her first time making vows on March 25th, 1809, where she comes for the first time, Mother Seton. The group begins to gather. These promised girls from Philadelphia arrive. Another will come from Philadelphia, a New York recruit, Eventually, uh, Cecilia uh, will come from New York. And there are others, uh, prominent women in Baltimore, who give it a go, but it turns out it's not for them. That's common in religious life. You know, they gave it a go. And finally then, all of this, on June 2nd, comes together. I mean, talk about fast. Talk about fast. It is unbelievable. So, so one year after her arrival, it's now the, the Feast of Corpus Christi again. They have taken on this, this new habit, and they walk into, into Mass. Very common you know, uh, image of Elizabeth and Seton is, is in her, her widow's weeds, that outfit's called. And listen to that description, right? The habit was in effect the standard widow's weeds worn in Italy. A black dress with short shoulder cape, a white muslin cap with crimped border tied under the chin by means of a black crepe band, a rosary draped from the leather belt that served for a cincture. So these sisters walk into Mass, a new community, just a year after arriving in Baltimore. Elizabeth beads were given to her by Madame Fournier. They're actually preserved in Emmitsburg. And if you look carefully at them, you'll see a couple inscriptions I want to mention to you. The beads are black and quite large. The cross hangs from them, engraved with the words, Caritas Christi Urgit Nos. The charity of Christ urges us on. The motto given by St. Vincent de Paul to the Daughters of Charity, uh, who, who, of course, her branch is the Sisters of Charity, the same, same spirit they're living under. Also, these words, Pauperis Evangentor, the poor must have the gospel preached to them. Right? That's what her desire is, to start these schools for the poor, that they would hear the good news preached to them. One more attached under the cross on a silver ring, Cor Unum, anima una, one heart, one soul. And that is our friend, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, one heart, one soul, with her Lord. Oh, she loved Jesus. Oh, she loved him so, so, so much that she was one of heart and soul with him. And, and so on June 21st, just a couple days after the, that, that, that feast day, they, they head up to Emmitsburg and, and the community grows. What a what an amazing gift to, to see that unfold and, and to hear how important the, 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 the habit was to, to, to them to, to have the, uh, the rosary as part of it. Um, we're talking about that, right? We're trying to see where is Blessed Mother in this story. And kind of similar to the sorrowful mysteries, it's not immediately apparent. You know, the, 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 the aha moment in Italy and, and discovering a mother, those joyful mysteries was certainly apparent to, the, 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 the wedding at Cana, the working of Mary to bring two hearts together, it's, it's a little more apparent that, that Mary's facilitating this, this falling in love. Um, so so the, the, the mother and the matchmaker were great, but here's, you know, more subtle. Like, like Elizabeth and Seton in the Sorrowful Mysteries last week, finding rest at the foot of, of the cross. Well, who's at the foot of the cross? Mary. So it's that union with Mary, standing as a sister with Mary, not just mother, like to be together in this, in this idea of, of forming community. So 
Think about Mary there at the start of the early Christian community, in the upper room. So there's St. Elizabeth Ann Seton at the start of this community. Mary, of course, holding them, them all together. And our catechism would certainly kind of express that, that role of Mary. Again, whenever we're searching for a, a sense of where's our church teaching on this, we can always count on the, the catechism of the Catholic Church. After her son's ascension, Mary aided the beginnings of the church by her prayers in her association with the apostles and several women. We also see Mary by her prayers imploring the gift of the Spirit who had already overshadowed her in the Annunciation. Right. Mary, in the Annunciation, receives the Spirit fully so that she can kind of gather that early community together to receive their mission, their calling. They're sending out to evangelize. Mary's there with Elizabeth and Seton and these young women coming together for their sense and calling to, to evangelize. So maybe less obvious, but just as important that Mary is walking still with Elizabeth and Seton through these chapters of, of her life. So the rosary, right? So the rosary. Well, first of all, it's evident that Elizabeth Ann Seton prayed it, right? She would have made it part of her habit because it was part of her, her prayer. So they wore those rosary beads right, right on their hip. How, how beautiful is that image? And then the, the idea that we're, we're trying to pray and focus on different sets of mysteries, we, we know the, the Annunciation you know, remains important to her. Uh, we know the, the, uh, the glorious mysteries are there too. Per, perhaps this insight from, from the... Uh, um, um, from Pope Leo the Great would help us to, to look at the first of the glorious mysteries, the, the Ascension. At Easter, beloved brethren, it was the Lord's resurrection which was the cause of our joy. Our present rejoicing is on account of his ascension into heaven. It is upon this ordered structure of divine acts that we have been firmly established so that the grace of God may show itself still more marvelous when in spite of the withdrawal from men's sight of everything that is rightly felt to command their reverence, faith does not fail, hope is not shaken, charity does not grow cold. For such is the power of great minds. Such is the light of truly believing souls that they put unhesitating faith in what is not seen with the bodily eye. They fix their desire on what is beyond sight. Does that not sum up the actions of Elizabeth Ann Seton as she gets to Baltimore, right? That she has a great mind, for such is the power of great minds, such is the light of truly believing souls, that they put unhesitating faith in what is not seen with the bodily eye. They fix their desires on what is beyond sight. Her desire was, was beyond sight. Sight and it was being fulfilled. It was on. It was uh, being revealed, and, and uh, it's glorious. It's glorious. So the mysteries are named, the ascension, right? The the descent of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's it's interesting that we actually have a uh, an account of, of confirmation that descent of the Holy Spirit in, in her own life, right? That uh, Bishop Carroll came to uh, to visit uh, a surprise visit to New York. And he gets to, they meet face to face, this patrician, right? Her father in God, she calls him throughout. What a great experience. But her delight increased almost to ecstasy when the bishop proposed to give her a week's instruction and spiritual direction in preparation for the sacrament of confirmation. She asked Father Tisserant to be her sponsor. Father Hurley had to step in as proxy when the ceremony took place on Pentecost itself, May 26, 1806. She took the name of Mary, which she often added to her signature. Mary, Elizabeth, Ann Seton. Sometimes her letters were signed. To, to know that the Archbishop has taken an interest with you and he's there to confirm you. Do we have that experience in our lives? I hope so. A, a felt sense of, of someone preparing us? I hope so. Family, friends, volunteers in the parish. Maybe you've been that for others, one preparing. Maybe you've been asked to be a sponsor. What do you do? You lay a hand on their shoulder. Whew, powerful symbol. The Spirit is there. The, we've got your back. 
Elizabeth Ann Seton knew that, that power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her. And she knew how to make sure that the sisters she was gathering unto herself were also receiving that, that same power as they made their, their profession. We reflected already on, on that, that journal entry she wrote that she was to be the mother of many daughters. Her excitement at that, being a mother of many daughters. After the assumption, we, we pray and, and meditate on that coronation. Mary is queen of heaven and earth mother of, of many daughters and sons, right? So there's a real a parallel in that life of Mary. It's a real parallel to what Elizabeth Ann Seton was able to, to experience you know, in, in union with Mary. These beautiful sisters in Christ, moving, marching together in response to what God asks of them. As we pray together the, the glorious mysteries now and kind of a conclusion of this journey of, of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, whatever comes to your mind from these, these days of, of reflection and these sessions on the life of Mother Seton are important. They should echo with our own lives, and, and we bring to, to that, we bring that to our, our prayer and our reflection, but there still may be more. There may be more in the, in the simple recitation of the rosary, in your reflection and prayer on the scripture quotes and catechism quotes we've used. Rewatch these sessions as needed as desired. Use them again as a prayer companion to say your rosary. How beautiful it is that we unite with each other in prayer. With the one who kept a rosary on her own belt, we are really united with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. We will be so as we meditate today on the glorious mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For an increase of faith, hope, and love, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive forgive us us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead Lead all all souls to heaven, heaven, especially those in most need need of thy mercy. The second glorious mystery, the Ascension. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, Jesus, forgive forgive us our sins, save save us from from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, 
full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my, my Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth glorious mystery, the coronation of Mary as Queen of heaven and earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive, forgive us our sins, save, save us from the fires of hell, lead all, all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee, to thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, then most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after, after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that while meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may both imitate what they contain and, and obtain what they promise through, through the same Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.